Hi, happy hump day. Um, today I got my, I defrosted my peppers and I made some ravioli. I had the spinach ravioli. That's the end of the spinach ravioli. This is it. Hope everybody's enjoying this beautiful day. Beautiful, beautiful. Today is November 9th, and I want to take you back to November 9th, <laughs> 1965. And uh, that was the night that the East Coast of the United States and part of a little bit of Canada, I don't know, Ontario, maybe, I don't know, had a blackout. My cousin, Mercy, and her sister, Marlene, they lived in apartment five. We lived in the city, 29th Street. And we were apartment seven. But every day we went to her house because her parents used to go clean the office buildings. Her father had an after-work part-time job that he would clean the offices on Park Avenue, some building, from like five o'clock till 10 o'clock. And his wife, Mercy's mother, Nina, she used to go and help him. So this way he can come home like a little bit earlier, you know, like nine o'clock, eight o'clock. So she would go and help him. And eventually she ended up getting a, a job. They they uh, they hired her. But anyway, so um, after school, the apartment was empty because her mother would leave for work at four o'clock, she would walk. So she'd leave at four o'clock. So four o'clock, we would go over to apartment five. <laughs> and we would watch Shindig and where the action is. And they, I tell you, those shows were great. Oh, there were so many groups at that time, American, British, and these two shows put all of them on. So every night we saw Jay and the Americans or One Hit Wonder or Frankie Valli, or not Frankie, um, whatever, Paul Anka, whoever it was. I don't think we ever saw the Beatles. The Beatles never went on those because they were too big. But anyway, the other wannabes that ended up to be somebody like Herman Hermits, you know, things like that. They would go on the show. So every night we would go, I don't know if it was every night, but anyway, this happened to be a Tuesday night. November 9th, 65 was a Tuesday. And um, we would move the, move the, what do you call it? Coffee table. And dance. We would do everything the go-go dancers did, but better. We were 13, and we knew everything. So we would do whatever, whatever dance they did, we did it. We sang all the songs. So about a little bit after five o'clock, it started to get dark because it was November. All of a sudden, and my, my, this was me and Mercy dancing. My sister and Molly were in the kitchen. Um, Mercy's mother would leave them dinner. So Marlene, she was 11. Molly was 11. We were 13. My sister was almost 12. And Marlene would be getting dinner ready for her and her sister because they had to eat by themselves and then do their homework and then go to bed. They would be in bed when their parents came home. Their parents came home like 10 o'clock from cleaning the office build, um, the offices in this building on Park Avenue. So all of a sudden the lights are flickering and the lights go out in the kitchen. So me and Mercy, we stopped dancing. We're looking at each other because it was just a little bit, not dark, dark outside, but it was getting to be dusk. And all of a sudden Marlene, 11 years old, in the kitchen. I told mommy to pay the electric bill. So we're like, oh my God, your mother didn't. I said, your mother didn't pay the electric bill. 
So I said, listen, I said, we can go to my house. No, I'm, we're in apartment seven, we're right down the hall. So we said, okay. So now we're going into the hallway to go to apartment, to go my, to my house to watch Shindig and we're, you know, to dance. As soon as we open the door and the, the lights, no, no lights in the hall. Now it's getting dark. Then we realized something happened, you know, we said, oh, maybe it's the building. Maybe the building lost electricity. So Marlene walks back. She goes, wait a minute. She goes, don't go out there. She goes, walk, goes back into the kitchen, comes out with a knife, <laughs> kitchen knife this big. She goes, let me walk in front. She goes, anybody come? 11 years old. So now we're we're holding on to each other. We're following her like ducks down the hall. And we knock on my mother's door. Ma, ma, Tessie. They're yelling, Tessie and I'm yelling, ma, ma. She opens up the door and there's no lights in my apartment. And there's no lights in them. But my mother had a candle, you know, those holy things, those big candles. I don't know what you call them. Saint candles or something. And a flashlight. So we walked in and we were all jabbering and everything. My mother didn't know what the hell's happening either. She thought, she didn't know what to think. My father wasn't home yet. He usually got home at six because we used to stay at Mercy's house dancing till six o'clock. Then we, me and my sister would have to go home, eat dinner with our parents, do homework and get in bed. That was the end of that. So I don't remember I guess we just waited for the, her parents to come home. I mean, the lights came on, I think, like 12 hours later, which was, of course, daytime, daylight. It was like 5 o'clock in the morning or something, maybe 6 o'clock in the morning. I think the city lights came back on. And I don't really remember <clears throat> if we went to school, <clears throat> if there even was school, but I, <clears throat> I remember... <clears throat> We were dancing to Shindig, and the lights went out, and Marlene saying, I told mommy to pay the electricity bill. Stay hydrated. <laughs> Get something to see, and dance. Don't forget to dance. I forgot to dance. I haven't been dancing lately. You gotta dance. You gotta dance every day. Like where the action is, those go-go girls. They knew how to do the go-go dances. They were great. Have a great day.